Matt Lenehan Boxing, social and association with Empire Fight Store. Hopi Price, it's been a hell of a long time. I think we interview quite frequently um, um, throughout your career as it's been going, but sadly due to injury, I know you've had um, hand problems. Um, thankfully enough, I know you're back punching and touch wood, sparring soon. Just give us a little bit of an update of where we're at with you. You know, uh, I've had a bit of time out, so this injury occurred in uh, my last fight I had, which was in August, so it's a long time ago now. And um, it happened in the fight, and afterwards, obviously, I did. I went to the hospital that night and the, when I seen the specialist a couple of days after, they said I might be able to like get away with it with me being young or to do rehab and this, that and the other. And I never punched. I remember not punching until like, till Christmas. So that was like August. I think it was August, was it? It was a few months. And then first spar I had in January, I landed a shot like sweet and sparring, but it just shattered again. Like I just fell straight away, it went. And I went back to the specialist and said, look, you're going to need the, need the op. So obviously I was gutted because I had to find a little minute of fight. I was mandatory. I was getting a bit of momentum, you know, I was ready to push on. And uh, knowing like I had to obviously pull out the purse bids and then not fight. And then I was out for a long time and just, but looking back now, it's probably the best thing that could have happened to me. So. I suppose just coming away from that, in boxing we always say when we take a loss it's like a lesson, although you won't add one in the ring, you've had a bit of a mental battle with this outside the ring because I'm sure you'll be going in the gym keep trying to keep yourself fit, seeing the likes of your brother who's had a stunning debut tonight and we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, so I can imagine this being quite frustrating for you. I think when people say like they started at this age, that age, I literally started boxing so young so yeah. it's one of them things and then my amateur career with me winning a lot of titles I was constantly away with the England team I was like I never ever I've had like probably no no time out of boxing even like I went from amateur straight to professional straight in fighting like even then lockdown obviously was the only time I had like not, not in the gym and I still boxed obviously in fight camp this is like the longest period of time I've had out of boxing so for the first couple of months I was a bit like especially the first few weeks I was bed bound because the, they had to take the bone out of the hip, so it was just that yeah. it was that injury as well. So it was like it's a bit mentally very very hard, you know. When you think to myself, like, what do I do in my life here? My life's revolved around routine, and yeah. you just think you you feel a bit useless if that makes sense. And yeah, and then obviously you sit and think, well, I've got time to do what what I probably want to do when I've got a little bit of time off. But then you really realise who's who's there for you and who's not, who's your friends and who's not. Who wants to be there when everything's just going good and you're winning, and then when things are sort of even though I didn't take a loss, but have you had that then? Even though it wasn't a loss in the ring where you've seen other people maybe I don't know not checking in on you and going you're all right or do you need anything or we'll wake up. Not 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 checking in on you. That's all right, I think. The one's been dropped. Dropped. Laron just got dropped. No way. Oh wow, he's been stopped. No way. Oh wow. Wow. Well, wow. Right, um, just shows you boxing. Boxing for you, but yeah, as I, as I was saying, it's. It was just. I, I did have that, you know, uh, people who you, you never thought would do it. Sometimes people are the closest to you, you know, just like. Just, but it's one of them things, it opens your eyes and if anything it showed me that I, I took my half the ball a little bit. I've got the eye, like the bit of the eye of the tiger back, you know, and um, I'm looking to push on now and show them how good I really am because I've been in with many world class fighters and they'll tell you how good I really am, you know, and uh, it's just one of them things when you're young and you're the prospect coming through, you, you can get a little bit complacent because sometimes it's too easy, And but um, I'm ready to push on now. Look, you were the name that was on everybody's lips and everyone were talking about you. We didn't have, I've not really had many fighters go come up to me and go, I want to fight him, I want to fight him. I have had one. I've actually interviewed him tonight, Kurt Walker. I think you two have sort of shook hands as he's come through. I said to Kurt, because I said, you still fancy that fight, don't you? And he goes, aye. I've said to him tonight, I said, I goes, why do you think, why him? Because Kurt, Kurt's a bit like yourself. There's, you don't, there's not really, you're both good boys, you're not really like going out slagging anyone off. But he's just like, because sometimes... He's almost like saying, you know what, you'll see the best of me when I'm in with 
a good fighter and I just believe I beat him. Is that a fight? Obviously, when you're back, by the way, <laughs> when you're back, um, back up and running, probably have a fight beforehand. Is he someone, obviously, he's building himself in Belfast under um, Conlon Boxing, um, esteemed amateur, very good pedigree as well. You look at someone like him and go, you know what, we can dance definitely. 100%, you know, I'm one of these, one of these, I, I will fight absolutely anybody. If it makes sense, I'll fight him, you know, and um, it proves that, you know, you go back and look at my record, yeah, I didn't really fight journeyman, you know, I, four fight, I box someone, five and all, 16 and one, 16 and two, you know, I boxed for, I boxed two or three title fights and I'm only 12 and all, you know, I've won three belts, yeah. two divisions. I think I'm number maybe 11, I think, at the minute with the WBA. I'm mandatory for the British title. The kid I boxed last was 14 and all. So that's my goal next, to be fair. I'm, I want the British title, you know. So uh, whoever I've got to fight, and I'm med, he's med mandatory to fight for the British because obviously Collins has uh, yeah. had an injury up. He's recovering and everything goes well. Uh, I don't know the situation with that, but it looks a bad injury. And I think he might be out for a long time. So... Uh, I think the belt, belt might become vacant, you know, when I get to fight for it. So, listen, I just want the belt, like the belt fights, you know. So, I've got the WBA Continental. I want the British title, the Commonwealth title. I'd like to fight the Italian fella for the European title. Do you know, and then we've got, we've got fighters like Nick Ball in our own country who's just probably gone on to be the best in the world at the featherweights at the minute. So, it shows you how quick you can go from there to there, how quick you can get there. And there's a lot of domestic fights to make, but I'll fight any single one of them. That's just how I am. I think that's a terrific fight, especially, uh, I know we mentioned a few fights there, Kurtz was coming off a good win against James Beach, um, a good win, and obviously we've seen what you've done, um, <laughs> seen how you've been sort of lining and stacking on your record, and you mentioned the names on your record as well, as well as the belts, well look, let's see, because the British title I know is important to a lot of fighters, I know it'll be important to you, um, talk about your brother, I know someone who's side by side, you've watched each other's journeys, and you're, a, you're like one of these where, you know, if maybe if you're having a bad day, you've got him to bounce off, vice versa. Oh, what, it's what? one of them things it's like see me and him we clash quite a lot people like chalk and cheese a little bit you know he's like like you said they call him the wild child he's he's a bit wild in some sense and I'm the quiet one but then it's like you'll get in the gym and I'm the one who's probably because I'm a little bit older I'm probably like the one who's more like yeah, yeah. Bit, probably a bit wilder in the gym and he's a bit more like because he's learning off me every day you know and um, he's stuck in him proud, I'm proud of him as well because he's, he's stuck in the gym for a year and Listen, everything doesn't always go your way, and sometimes you don't get the, the credit he deserves. You know, the kids won six national titles, yes. Europeans, bronze medals, and I think with him being my brother a little bit, sometimes people don't give him the same same credit. You know, like that he's always had all your hope, his brother. But listen, it, that's not the case. You know, this kid's a phenomenal talent, and he'll, he's make his own name for himself. Do you know? Um, he's, he's got a different style to me, and it, it suits the pro game as well. So I'm very proud of our box tonight, and. It shows the confidence the team's got in him because he went straight into a six round there against a good opponent. So, in all fairness as well, me and Dave have interviewed for many years, and he says, "Look, I know Matt, you know a lot about Hopi, but he says his brother as well. He says it's not just Hopi. His brother's coming along. He's unbelievable. His class as well, just like Hopi, very good fighters. And he's always going to have that bit, a little bit of a. He's got me beside him. You know, I, I, I've been there and I'm, I'm doing it, and I'm still, still doing it. So it's like. Whatever experience I'm gaining, he's he's stood next to me every single day on the way to the gym. We'll drive an hour and a half to the gym, an hour and a half back, and he's he's beside me, you know, picking picking stuff up. So even though we argue like cat and dog, yeah, but that's but that's brothers and that's competitiveness. And I'm sure you've uh, had a muck about the gym, shared rounds, and all that kind of stuff. Nice. But what happens um, tonight was Barry Jones, I think, has said that was one of the best, I think, all the best professional debuts you'll see. And there's a lot of pressure when you're making your professional debut. You only have one of them, but he's shone tonight. Um, yeah. You must just touch on his performance. You know what? A very, very good performance and like mature, show maturity of, like beyond his years. You know, um, first of all, obviously going in, into a six rounder against an opponent. What I've seen, he's been about the block, but. He fights these kids who's had maybe eight fights, nine fights, and he's gone in and fought him in his first fight. Um, obviously, that first round you come out, everybody's like, it's like the anticipation. Yeah. Oh. But I think he settled in right well. He showed, he showed what it takes to like break a fighter down. Yeah. He didn't look like he was breathing heavy. Like he looked like he could have done eight, ten, twelve rounds in there. You know, and it, it's just, I was a bit like that. And it's telling him not to rush. You know, I know these young fighters want to get the knockout, and everyone wants to see the knockout, but. Sometimes you see these kids blowing these journeymen away in one or two rounds, one or two rounds, and then all of a sudden they get to title level, it gets past six, and they're not blowing them away, and it's sort of like, oh, what do we do here? And yeah. then they come on stuck then. It's so 
I feel like that's why I think Dave will match him hard. He'll make him have proper fights and he'll make, make sure he's learning the same as I've done. He's always said that yourself. Um, another talented kid in your gym, uh, Stephen Cairns. I know um, Dan Towards on later, but Stephen Cairns, he's always said, nah, he's going to get it hard because what's the point of me putting with him easy? He said he's, he's got the ability. But look, quickly, yourself and him, the next generation that we've we've spoke about this before. Um, shout out to Josh Warrington. Um, he probably thinks I'm wishing his career. I'm not. I've, I love you, Josh. But um, obviously, he's on the the other side of that now. And in a few a few more fights, there'll be that gap there for like for yourself, your brother. Try to take over that lead circuit. You must be looking at that arena, going, can we, can we not headline? That's me? why I've uh, I've been listening. I went the other day to watch the even you see. I think it's one of the best arenas for boxing. It's, it's like a full-on fortress. It's not a bad seat in the house, and no matter what they send, it's always packed to the rafters, you know. And especially if one of their own's fighting, you know. And um, that's why I'm so like trying to get my hand on, on yeah, and trying to get my hand on these belts because, listen, once I win that British title and I've got a couple of belts, no matter who I defend against, that place will be packed to the rafters. I'll be able to headline in that first direct arena, and you know that's when your career can really spiral you know and um, then it just builds and builds and it just keeps going and going and going and you know like you say it's it's a fortress and uh, even in there I boxed in there once before it's just like you feel like you can't get beat at home if that makes sense it's it's, it's, it's one of them things so uh, I look forward to it and uh, I just can't wait to headline the place yeah 100% uh, it's one of them places I say I always say like your Leeds um, Belfast another one the proper fighting cities and um, yeah it's going to be good you know fingers crossed to see a few more big nights there from Josh and then obviously when he passes the torch to you guys you take it over and um, look appreciate your time it's good to see you back glad to hear that you're fighting and punching again and we look forward to seeing your brother's journey as well alongside yourself appreciate your time Opa. back very soon anyways keep an eye on